Every once in a while. I'm gonna treat myself. Treat yourself. It's the best day of the year! We got a box from Starrett. Let's open it up and see what I got. Stand by. Hey everybody, welcome back to our Rattle Can Fab Shop. I am James, and if you follow the channel for any amount of time, you will know that I have a small collection of used micrometers that I have been picking up here and there in order to assist me with my metrological needs. And I thought that I would treat myself and buy a brand new tool. And as with all things here at the channel, economy comes into play uh, because there are not very many of us that have an unlimited gigantic pile of money. So you have to balance. My family is waving at me as I am attempting to film this video. Stand by. Sorry about that. Somebody needs a ride to the airport and I was able to barter a ride to the airport for a big spicy bowl of pho. So anyways, I have attempted to strike the balance between performance and economics. And what I have purchased is a Starrett 0 to 1 inch IP67 electronic micrometer without output. And what that means is that is a, it's a part number, 796.1 XRL-1. It is a made in China. Okay, now I'm getting another strange look. I may, have to, I may have to show you what I'm doing. I'm standing here trying to make this video, looking out across my driveway and my house, there's a window and my wife and my oldest daughter and the cat are all staring at me and the cat is standing up in the window doing because well me poops in a box what do you expect so apparently at least from what i can read um one of the big differences between the made in the usa digital micrometers and calipers and the ones that are made in uh it's either so chu or so chow my um pronunciation of the Shinessa is a little deficient is that if you want if you want to be able to output to a PC through a serial cable you have to that's a made in America kind of feature so anyways let's reset stuff and we'll look and see what's in the box that I got for my somewhat large pile of uh, American dineros so more than likely what's going to happen is so I'm going to buy exactly one brand new instrument and then I'm going to go right back to buying the ones on the used market and such like that from now on. Anyways, kind of like cars. I bought exactly one new car in my life and I'll probably never do that again. Anyways, here's the label. <clears throat> Uh-oh, warning, CR2032, lithium batteries. Hmm, so there's that, you've been warned. <clears throat> Here we are with the Starrett interior box. We have an inspection certificate from Goo. Thank you very much for inspecting my stuff. And the obligatory user's manual. You know, plastic, it's part of the, I guess, economy that you get. I don't know if new Starrett's come in plastic boxes now as well. It was cool when they came in the old uh, the old wooden ones. Uh, anyways, these envelopes, these are for the batteries. Who is that by? Renata. I'm not sure what that little 
pictographical thing is on there. Apparently when I'm done, I'm supposed to feed that to small children. Well, it seems kind of dumb, but anyways. <clears throat> Sealed packaging. Uh, we don't get them in oil paper anymore. Hold on a second. Let's get some Caesars. Now, if you read some of the reviews of this instrument, there have been people complaining about spotty um, current as far as the batteries having an ill fit in the back. So hopefully that's not going to be the case. Hopefully ours will work uh, peachy keen. So here we are right out of the box. I guess I could get you a little closer. Uh, we do get our little wrench for whatever we needed to wrench. This is, this is really the reason you like to buy new stuff is you get to go, oh, man, it's a great day. You get to do that. So, first thing uh, that we're happy about when we notice is that these are not touching when they shipped it. Because that is apparently a no-no. Uh, you'll see this one does have the satin finish. And it also has the ratcheting thumb thimble in a contrasting black color. We do have kind of a crinkle finish gray on the outside. Uh, we do have a plastic lever lock or spindle lock. We do have an inch to millimeter button, a hold button, a datum button, and a zero and absolute button. Notice there is no on and off switch. And then on the back, we can see the CE. Uh, oh, I suppose I need something to open that, don't I? Hey, wait a minute, look here. I got one of these. Perhaps this will work. Lo and behold, it does. Now this does not come with the paperwork that would enable it to be traceable. Some of the industries that you work in, your instruments have to have the ability to be calibrated and traced. And my goodness, that is a noisy vehicle. That would be the local fire department, guys. The uh, fire station is about five blocks away from my house, and we are actually on the way to the hospital, so we get to wave at those guys quite a bit. The instructiones say that when we put these in, we are supposed to go positive to positive, and then insert them in. We do have a rubber gasket. We do also have a rubber seal where the spindle goes into the body. We'll look at that in just a second. Because this is an IP67 rated instrument. IP stands for ingress protection. So the first number is how resistant it is to dust getting inside. The second number is how resistant it is to water getting inside at stated criteria. You have to go look up the, uh, look up like IP67 and find out what that stated criteria is. So now when we rotate the button, it asks us to cal. Doing the cal. The tool must be in the absolute mode for the button to function. Typically, the datum will be set to the shortest measurement position. For example, if the anvil closed for the one inch and 25 millimeter versions, which would be this. So we set that to zero, or do we hit the datum? 
datum zero. There we go. So now we can open up our fancy schmancy calipers. Um, it is super smooth, which is quite nice because I have gotten a number of micrometers from different sources and this feels like you're grinding teeth on the inside of them. Um, and those uh, involve taking, basically taking it apart and cleaning it out um, using some small brushes and mineral spirits. Uh, the instruction manual will tell you in here that you are not supposed to take this spindle all the way out. You have got one revolution past maximum distance and that is as far as you get to wind this bad boy out. So there we go. It, you know, I've had the thing for what? I've had it out of the package for like 17 seconds. Um, it's an, it's, it's heavy. I will say that. Uh, it is certainly heavier than the other one inch micrometer that I have. Which is this teeny tiny Lufkin. There is a substantial weight difference between the two. I imagine there will be a substantial quality difference between the two as well. So that's what you get in the box. Uh, I'm not even going to give you a first impression of it because I haven't done anything to get an impression of it. Um, but this is going to see, I would imagine, quite a bit of use over the next, well, two years, two years plus. Uh, I guess I could update you and tell you that um, I have now uh, officially changed my one-year certificate program pursuing two other year-long certificate programs uh, now into an associate's program, which includes all three of those certificate programs and a bunch of other stuff, including some garbage like sociology and English, which I took in 1995, but anyways, that's another rant for another day. So there it is. That is the, let's get the part number right again. That is the Sterrett. 796.1 XRL-1, 0 to 1 inch, IP67 rated electronic micrometer without the output. Uh, it does have the full backing of the Sterrett Company. So we'll let you know. Let you know how we like it. I'm sure we will like it, um, but we'll see. Because right now we're doing a lot of lathe work, and that's running a micrometer in on a lathe is, is something else. And w honestly, one of the reasons that I, I made the decision to go with this is because, you know, I got old man eyes. And uh, I think I should probably be able to see some of this stuff that's going on. So anyways, I'm James, Rattlecan Fab Shop. Uh, an unboxing of something that will probably not happen again. I purchased a brand new instrument. Uh, if you thought this was somewhat entertaining, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. Also hit that little bell so you'll be notified next time I do one of these and you can say, hey, that dumb guy's on again. Uh, if you got comments, uh, put it in the uh, comment section down beneath the sermon notes. i uh, love to hear from you guys. You guys have always got great ideas and comments. And uh, remember, if I can do it, you can do it. You guys have a great weekend. Cheers. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to spend it here with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Here's one that you might enjoy as well. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that button. Hit the bell next to it so that you get a notification when we drop a new video. 
you got comments, put them down beneath the sermon notes. And remember, if I can do it, you can do it. You guys have a great weekend. Cheers.